He's Stan Van Gundy, NBC Sports Network, NBC Sports Radio basketball analyst. Of course, the former uh, NBA coach who joins us now. Stan, how are you? Uh, I'm good, but I'll tell you what, Dan. Your friends that are going to the Big East tournament, yep. send them to watch better basketball at the Atlantic 10 tournament, a far better league than the Big East. Really? You think more competitive? Well, yeah, and, and more good teams. I mean, certainly Villanova had the upset, and Creighton's very good. Who else in that league's a real good team? Well, we, that's why we were talking about this 10 minutes ago. I'm not surprised with any of these teams losing. Maybe Florida, Arizona, Wichita State, they would surprise me losing. But Villanova losing yesterday, I went, okay. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, and that speaks to the parity, I think, in college basketball, which I think is a good thing. Um, you know, I'm, But I'm here at the Atlantic 10 tournament. I'm a little biased because I'm here doing it. But they've probably got six teams going to the NCAA tournament, um, all in action today. Barclays Center is a beautiful place. Send your friends this way. It's uh, St. Louis taking on St. Bonaventure. Uh, you got VCU against Richmond. You can see those games on uh, NBCSN. I think, uh, what, coverage starts today at noon on uh, NBCSN? It does, yeah, and then it goes all day. And then St. Joe's and Dayton is a, is a big one mm. um, because there's some people saying the loser of that won't get in. I think it would be an injustice uh, both of those teams have uh, great resumes. Um, and then George Washington uh, playing UMass. George Washington, a team that beat Creighton earlier in the year. Um, yeah, there's six really, really good teams in this league. Let me ask you about Creighton. I, I watched McDermott last night. It, it's a fun team to watch. You know, They're not afraid to put up the three. Um, if, if you were looking at the draft right now, Jerry West is on record as saying, I don't think this is a great draft. These kids aren't ready. McDermott being a senior, is ready, but is he a guy that you would risk a top five pick on? You know, I I can't say that I've studied him enough. I've watched him uh, three or four times, but I haven't really studied him. I think he's going to struggle on the defensive end of the floor, uh, but he'll figure it out offensively. I think a major question is going to be where does he play? Is he a three or a four Um, positions in the NBA are always who you can guard. I'm not sure he can guard either spot, Um, but he will figure out a way to score. He's a smart player. He knows how to get shots, Um, and then obviously he's a great shooter. Is it worth tanking to get Wiggins or Jabari Parker or Joel Embiid? I, I don't, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy. I don't ever think it's worth tanking, and I was listening to you earlier this morning, and I think this conventional wisdom that the only way to rebuild is to lose and you don't want to be in the middle of the pack, I don't think people have paid attention uh, to how Indiana and Houston have gotten to where they are now. Neither one of those teams have tanked or have done it with high picks. Indiana, other than Andrew Bynum now, um, maybe, but I don't even know on that. But the roster that's gotten them there, they don't have a, they don't have a single guy in their roster who was picked above 10 in the draft. Mm. Paul George was their highest pick at 10. You look at what Houston's done. They haven't done it through tanking in the draft. Uh, not only do I not think that's the only way to rebuild, I'm not even sure that history will tell you that's the best way to rebuild. Obviously, you can point to San Antonio um, and Oklahoma City, but a lot of the teams, it seems to me, that lose to try to get draft picks just continue to lose and lose and lose and lose. He's Stan Van Gundy, NBC Sports Network, joining us Dan Patrick Show. Why is there a delay in the Phil Jackson decision? You know, that's interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, you can speculate on a lot of things, but I think it's more complicated um, getting a contract signed than people think. I mean, it's one thing to have an agreement, okay, we want you and you want to come here, that's great, but there's all kinds of things uh, to be worked out and agreed on, and his situation seems a little more complex because they're talking about, you know, how many days he's actually going to be in New York. There's a lot of things to talk through, so I'm not sure the fact that he hasn't had a final agreement means that uh, he's angling to stay in L.A. Do you think the Lakers made a last-ditched effort, last run at him? I don't know. I mean, basically, from what Phil Jackson has said, you know, he wants a front office position. He doesn't want to come back just to coach. Um, To do that in L.A., they would basically have to get rid of or at the very least demote Mitch Kupchak, who seems, 
you know, to be held in high regard in their organization. So would it be a major restructuring? Um, and, and I'm not sure if they're willing to do that or not. When you start to point the fingers of blame with the Lakers, um, where do you start? Well, I, I think part of it is is luck. I mean, you know, people never want to do that because we want to have concrete people to blame. But but Kobe getting hurt and then the fact that, you know, they took a chance on Dwight and it didn't work out. And one of the reasons it didn't work out was the injuries um, they had there. And so things fell apart pretty quickly. Um, Look, I think where it fell apart, quite honestly, was – they made that early season coaching change. Um, they wasted training camp. They got injuries. Uh, I think that decision really cost them a good part of last year uh, and then led to a bad year, Dwight leaving. Everything sort of snowballed from there. I thought the way they handled the whole coaching thing last year was a disaster. A uh, better shape, the Knicks or the Lakers right now? You know what, man, that's a tough one. I, I think I'd rather have the Lakers. At least they have some money to spend um, to make this thing better. The Knicks, you're talking about a team that's 13 or 14 games under 500, has no money under the uh, cap, and has no draft picks. The Lakers have both <laughs> draft picks and cap space. So at least for the immediate future, uh, they're certainly better off than the Knicks are. I had a smart NBA guy who's uh, kept me up to speed on the whole Phil to the Knicks situation. He said, you know, here's something to keep in mind. Phil is the guy who can get LeBron if he would opt out to go to New York. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying that. I, I, I'm not sure uh, a player ever makes a decision based on a coach, but I definitely don't think a player is going to make a decision based on a front office guy who he's going to really have limited contact with. Now that's not to say that, that guy can't have influence. I mean, Phil Jackson may be able to go out there and show LeBron a great plan for the franchise that looks feasible uh, that LeBron would buy into or anybody else would buy into and go there. But I don't think he's going there just to say, hmm. you know, wow, that's Phil Jackson. I mean, that was the theory behind Michael Jordan, right? All the players were going to flock to play for Michael Jordan. First of all, it's money. And second of all, then it's going to be they're looking for a situation where they can win. They're not going to play for personalities. Well, how much – and you, you speak to a great point here. And we were talking about this with NFL free agency. How important is winning to today's athlete as opposed to that salary, that check you cash? Well, it's never more important than uh, the money. Uh, but, but look – Players sort of get um, derided for that, for the fact that they that they go for the money. And yet, if all of us think about our own jobs, hey, the money's a big factor. Yeah, there's other things, but the money's a big factor. And if, if you're going to talk a salary difference of 15, 20 percent, something like that, most of us are going for the higher salary. And so Certainly these guys are. Their careers are short, plus it is a status thing on the money. Um, Now, I think there are guys like LeBron. They know their salary is going to – you know, be at the maximum range, so that's not going to matter. And so they're looking for wins. But for those guys, you know, where it's going to be a difference of a million, two million dollars a year, yeah, they want the money. Okay, if I said you could coach the Cleveland Cavaliers for more money or you could coach – the Miami Heat for less money. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you three million dollars more a year to coach Cleveland than I will in Miami. Well, three million dollars is a lot more, but um, you know, see, I'm a little bit different now. Number one, it's family situation, and number two, I can read a weather report. So uh, <laughs> you know, that one for me is an, is an easy decision right there. I mean, Miami and Cleveland. Heck, I might coach in Miami for free before. <laughs> I mean, Cleveland in the winter, you know, I, look, I don't want to, you know, offend people in Cleveland. No, of course not. There's great people there, but I do wonder about their decision-making ability. There are other places you can live. Well, they're great people there, but they're freezing. Before I let you go, 
I, I get the feeling Phil Jackson took too much credit in Los Angeles, and that bothered people, whether it was Jerry West or Kobe or Mitch Kupchak or the Bus family. Do you think there's any validity to that? Because he's the Zen master who wrote the books and had his championship rings on display. It seemed to be about Phil's legacy, maybe more than it should have been. Well, look, Phil is the most successful coach in the history of the league, and there's no way to overstate, in my opinion, what what he did. Um, Sure, he had great players, uh, but to win when you're expected to win every year is not an easy thing to do. So I don't think he necessarily got too much credit, but I do think you're on to something. I think what happened is some other people didn't get enough enough credit. Uh, certainly the Lakers front office, who did a great job putting together those rosters, uh, did not get enough credit, and I'm sure that creates friction. Look, it, that's one of the reasons it's hard to win over a long period of time, and what San Antonio's done is so incredible, because the more you win, the more egos get involved and issues like you're talking about with credit become a problem and friction develops. It, it's a very difficult thing, and, and that's why when I look at the Spurs, um, I'm amazed at how long they've been able to hold this thing together. Have fun today, Stan. We'll be watching. Thanks, Dan. Have a good one. Stan Van Gundy, NBC Sports Network. They'll have live coverage of the A-10 tournament quarterfinals. It starts at noon Eastern. you got number 18, St. Louis, taking on St. Bonaventure. Basketball all day, all night on NBC SN.